outbreak into our session using the new feature of HTML5. So, first thing first, who am I? My name is Marco Bonetti. I'm an Italian security consultant working for Cataway. Um, here are my mail address on the company site. I'm also a member of Slackware Linux Project Italia, the Italian uh, part of the Slackware Linux Project. Uh, here are my contacts over there. Uh, I'm part of the project because I've ported Slackware to the PowerPC architecture. And when I'm not working for Cataway, when I'm not taking the PowerPC stuff, I'm a great Tor user and research. And here are my pointer for that part of my life. So what we will see now, um, we take an intro, then uh, we take a look at all HTML5 related stuff, and we close the, the talk with uh, some ideas. Okay, the intro part. Um, who does not know what Tor is? Okay, cool, yeah. <laughs> Um, we can skip this slide, but just give you uh, some insight. Okay, uh, everybody knows that Tor is a network of virtual tunnels, and uh, it's used to improve privacy and the resistance against tracking attack. And uh, how does it work? Your connection gets bounced around the world on an overlay network uh, built on top of the internet using the onion routing technique. And um, uh, there's a lot of cryptography involved, so uh, your connection are safe and your your secrecy your secrecy is uh, is protected. Uh, when you start or however, uh, you can see this uh, this warning, which is say this is experimental software. Do not rely on it on it for strong anonymity. Uh, why? Because uh, Tor does work uh, very well when you are just trying to set up a TCP connection, but there are some problems when you start adding layer adding stuff on top of TCP and we try to exploit this problem right now. So, uh, what does HTML5 provide to us? The first thing we, uh, to mention, worth to mention, is client-side storage. What is client-side storage? Um, if, you want to, uh, if you want to read a cool insight on client-side storage, I point you to Alberto Trivero's work. He did some great work on client-side storage. Um, I take in, I've taken uh, his ideas and I ported it in the Onion land. Uh, what does client-side storage offer? It offers session storage, local storage, and database storage. And uh, it's uh, the storage part of the uh, browser experience ported to the client side, not to the server side. So uh, how does session storage work? What, what is it? Um, all of the storage, local, the, the client part, the client side storage, it's uh, like cookies, but on steroids. They are better cookies. Uh, the session storage is bound to the web application domain, like the cookies. Uh, it's bound to the currently opened window, and it's lost when the window is closed. It's a session, all right? Local storage is very similar to session. It's bound to the web application domain, so like cookies, but both of them offer more space than cookies. And uh, local storage can be accessed from any browser window, not only from the current, currently opened one. And the local storage is destroyed only by the web application. Data persists when the browser is closed, like cookies, but better. <laughs> Database storage, the same thing. Bound to the web application domain, full client-side relational database controlled by web application, and it's persistent. And, well, right now, it's only available in Safari. Um, you can download Google Gears, which I think will provide you some kind of database storage. But um, the native built-in uh, database storage is only available in uh, Safari. So, <clears throat> how can we abuse client-side storage in the Onion land? Uh, old no attack vectors still apply. Uh, there are a, a lot of cool things you can do with the client-side storage. Uh, SQL injection. You can inject the client and not the server. Or you can do whatever you want with the, this kind of technology. Uh, here, when uh, we are browsing the onion land, data persistence is a key issue because you can leak your privacy. Um, 
There are already a rogue exit node which can steal your cookies or do bad things uh, to your browser session. They can leverage these old attack techniques to a new level, like they can inject code to manipulate your data, or they can inject code for transmitting your client-side storage data to an attacker server. But we are lucky because uh, if you want to access client-side storage, it's all JavaScript based. So if you run Firefox and you run Tor button, you are safe. They are a good defense. Uh, next to client-side storage, there are offline web applications. They are really tied with client-side storage. Uh, HTML5 will standardize the possibility to save a web application in your browser cache. So you can use the web application while you are offline. Then you come online and you sync the modified data, the local, locally modified data with the online data. Um, there are rules, strict rules, uh, to prevent tampering with the uh, web offline web application installation. Uh, I have to say that this concept is not very new because Firefox 3.0 introduced the offline event and uh, Google Gears and the Dojo offline, Dojo offline frameworks uh, build, uh, let you build uh, offline web application using Firefox offline events. And as you can imagine, storing a web, web application in the browser cache is very tied up to the client-side storage. How can we abuse the offline web application? Well, uh, there's a leak of privacy if we don't, we don't do a transition between online, offline, and Tor and non-Tor states uh, when, um, if, if, we, if we don't do this, uh, this trans transition safely, or we do not properly handle the transition. The tra transition. Uh, we require a strong separation policies, like Tor button already does with the protected cookie jar. Uh, what Tor button does is when you enable Tor button, uh, it will just forget your currently non-Tor cookie jar, and we create a new cookie jar when, uh, where it will save all your Tor cookie. So Tor cookies and non-Tor cookies are physically separated. And uh, we need the same thing when uh, offline web application will be uh, uh, publicly available to all and built in, the, in every browser. Because uh, it's easy. If you, if you don't do this physical separation, you can leak data in a, a Tor and non-Tor states, and this is not good to your privacy. Um, I have to say that uh, even offline web applications are strongly JavaScript-based. So uh, the same rules of thumb apply. If you run with uh, Firefox and Tor button, you can block most of the attacks. But on the other side, they won't probably work. The web application won't probably work. So let's go on. There are, there are the custom protocol handler. Um, they are old stuff, but HTML5 will standardize them. Um, I've described them as web 2.0ified version of an old concept. Um, you know that when you click on a link and uh, the server will give you a file together a MIME type, which is not the plain HTML, uh, your browser will ask you what to do with that kind of file. So it will remember uh, the next time you click on the same kind of link, uh, what to do, like opening an external program or downloading the, downloading the file or whatever. Um, <clears throat> HTML5 say that, uh, okay, um, it's cool. Uh, you can use web applications to do that. Um, so when you click, uh, I don't know, a JPG image, you can open it with Flickr, for example. Um, it uses a JavaScript technology, which is available since Firefox 3.0. And 
this is a kind of attack. We, we use this piece of JavaScript, which is a register protocol handler. We, I, I, had, I hadn't match fantasy, so I call the MIME type, the type of the application, the Tor. And uh, I provide a web application URL, which is attacker.com, and a description, the Tor handler, okay? Then I present the client with this kind of URL, which is the Tor and a unique ID. So uh, if the browser registered this kind of protocol handler, it will use uh, it will use that uh, the Suri, this one. Uh, how can we abuse it? Well, uh, between exploiting a privacy leak when switching between Tor and non-Tor states without clearing out the, the registered custom protocol handler, we could do a cool thing, which is tapping the unique ID we provide to the client together with a 302 redirection and the clocknet style DNS server. Um, why we, we need uh, this kind of stuff? Uh, because the <clears throat> when we use this piece of JavaScript, the register protocol handler, we cannot provide any uh, domain. We have to provide the same domain where the, the JavaScript is, uh, um, is served. So this page is hosted at attacker.com, and we have to use attacker.com in the, in the register protocol handler function. So what we do? When the client visits this URL with the unique ID, we redirect them with a, a simple HTTP redirection. Uh, maybe, I don't know, to uniqueid.attacker.com. And we use a the clocknet style DNS server to try to get the, the real user IP. Um, if you don't know what the clock.net the, the clock is, it's uh, a site built by H.D. Moore, the, the guy from Metasploit, and uh, he's hosting several, several tools to broke uh, Tor sessions. And uh, one of these tools is uh, a particular kind of DNS server, um, which uh, will answer you with the, the external IP address of the, of the client, which is asking something to, to, the, to this kind of DNS server. Pretty, pretty strange. Um, there are any defense? Well, again, we need JavaScript. This time we need only one function. Uh, Tor button permits this, uh, this kind of uh, JavaScript function. Uh, it, it does block only a subset of all the JavaScript sub function. If you, if you want uh, to be really safe, uh, play Tor button together with NoScript because NoScript will let you block everything. However, uh, Tor button does not block this kind of uh, function because, well, uh, the hand user have to accept to use uh, the new uh, protocol handler. It's not automatic. Uh, there will be a, a warning on top of your Firefox which say, hey, do you want to use this custom protocol handler? Yes, no. And uh, the latest version of Tor button adds a nice defense mechanism, which is this. I was browsing to the slackware.com site. I click with Tor. I click on the um, install DVD number one ISO, uh, the torrent file, and this, uh, this message pop ups, uh, which is asking me if uh, I really want to load the external application to handle this, uh, this kind of, uh, of mind type. Uh, I click. Yes, okay, launch the application, and the download manager of, file, of Firefox pops up. Um, yeah, it's nice, but uh, I'm going to ask you, when you see this kind of next screen, who will not press cancel? Everybody press, okay, okay, yes, yeah, right. Let me download it. Okay. Um, another feature of HTML5, this is browser geolocation. Um, this is not, strictly, strictly speaking, this is not part of HTML5. Um, it's the ability to tell a location-aware web application where you are, so you can just stop toying around with your PDA, with your iPhone, and take a look around and see what there is around you. 
Anyway, uh, it's quite cool, and uh, it, need, it needs to, to know where you are. Um, geolocation is it's being pushed right now into all mainstream browser, and hopefully information sharing is optional. There is a, like, th this is a screenshot of, of Firefox. I wrote up a custom test page uh, at my site, and uh, it's asking me if, uh, if I want to share the lo my location with the, with the site or not. Um, where does the browser, the, the web application take, the browser takes the data to, to send to the web application? Um, first, it will, uh, it will look at the wireless cell data. Um, this service was, uh, was brought here to Loki, Loki.com. Later it was acquired by Google, and now Firefox 3.5 exchange a two weeks cookie with, uh, with the, the Google services providing geolocation. Um, then it could uh, look up if there are any available GPS device like Safari for iPhone does or the latest beta of Firefox does with Linux and uh, GPST demon. As a last resort, it will use GOP, an old friend. Uh, how can we abuse browser geolocation? Well, it's the holy grail for the anonymization attack. We just ask the user, hey, where you are? Okay, I'm here. <laughs> um, so far, tar button does not block this browser feature. Um, I don't know why. Mm, I think mainly because this feature lets the user choose if sharing or not sharing the location. So if a user is trying to surf anonymously on the web, I don't think he is going to share his location to a web application. Mm, maybe, maybe yes, maybe not. Um, we are safe because geolocation with GOP, it's weak because it will spot the exit node uh, position. So. It doesn't, we, we doesn't really care about it. I think that Tor button will have to set geo.enable false when GPS is fully supported by browsers because, uh, yeah, a user may click on yes, but I think it's not cool <laughs> if a site will, will reveal our geographical location just asking us. Uh, here are the, the funny stuff, multimedia elements. Okay, um, multimedia elements are a new form, a new evolution of some old friends. Everybody think you, you, you know and you probably meet, already met, embed and object element. They are from the older version of HTML, the fourth version. They, they have been confirmed in the new version and uh, they are used to include mu multimedia resources into a page. Um, th they need uh, an attribute which is a source for embed and data for object. Type is optional. But, well, uh, source and data are used to, to give the browser the location of the multimedia uh, resources. And type is used uh, like a protocol, uh, protocol handler to, to load up an external program or application or plugins or whatever. Uh, the main difference between embed and object is that embed is a bit more restrictive. I mean, uh, with embed, you can only use, uh, I think, no, flash note, maybe uh, sound, video, something like that. But it doesn't really matter. Uh, in the past, embed and object were used to launch the anonymization attacks against our user um, via external program because it was easy at the time. Uh, a user was browsing with uh, Firefox or uh, Internet Explorer or whatever under window, and uh, he clicked. Uh, on a embed links and the uh, Windows Media Player pops up and bam, the user is fucked up because the, the multimedia player will not honor the browser proxy. So if the, uh, the user were browsing with the Tor, the multimedia player not. So uh, an attacker server could correlate the IP of the Tor session with the IP of the non-Tor session and reveal the real address of the user. What will HTML5 bring to us? Well, it brings to us some new player. They are video, they are audio, and they are source. Um, like the one before, they are used to describe a multimedia resource. 
um, they are cool because uh, you can the, the playback of the of the resource can be controlled either by calling the uh, the browser control or by, uh, via JavaScript. And um, source is very similar to embed. Uh, video is used to embed a video element and audio to embed an audio element. And how can we abuse them? Here's a nice attack. As you can see, we are using the video element. We are giving it a width, an eight. We are using the source attribute to locate the resource. Um, if you are wondering what this OGG tier file is, it's, it's just the standard uh, mozilla.org test of Tura for Firefox. And we are abusing this, uh, this attribute, which is poster. With poster, uh, we are using an FTP URL because Tor doesn't play very well with FTP. And we are using a PNG file. What the poster is? The poster is just a, an image the browser will load while it, it, it is retrieving the, the video resources or, or whatever else is here. And we are using auto buffer and auto play. Uh, auto buffer tells the browser just to catch the resource automatically and auto play just to play the resource once it's completely buffered. Um, this is not very important in just uh, a text. It will be displayed if, if the browser doesn't understand the video element. Uh, how can we describe this kind of attack? It's broken because we do not use no external program. We do not use any JavaScript, and it's pure HTML browser de-anonymization. Um, I did some tests. I ran this kind of attack on a Windows XP service pack free. I test both Chrome free, Chrome 4, Safari, both Firefox 3.5 and and the latest beta, I, I did some uh, tests of running this week. And I tested the, the Firefox version both with and without Tor button. And uh, I did the test both using either the Polypo HTTP proxy chained to Tor or Tor itself as a SOX proxy because um, there is some ongoing discussion on the Tor user mailing list uh, about uh, if, if they should drop support to um, to the Polypo proxy in, the, in their bundle because uh, Firefox play quite well with, uh, with SOX without leaking any DNS. But, so it has, it has both ways. And here are the results. As you can see, Chrome will leak the, um, the original IP address because it's easy. Um, you can't have uh, an HTTP proxy uh, honoring an FTP session. So the browser will just say, oh, okay, an FTP. Oh, I, I do not use the proxy. I just go plain. And Safari will leak. Um, that's, that's interesting. The, the current stable version of Firefox, it's safe, even with or without our button. And, then, and I'll explain you why. While the, the latest version of Firefox, the beta, um, it will only leak when, uh, when using uh, Polypo and uh, without using Tor button. Um, if you take a look on the, on the right side of the slide, um, leaking is, is far, uh, uh, it's less dangerous when using SOX because um, I think because the, the browser will, uh, will just not uh, try to, to set up an FTP connection when, uh, when they got a SOX proxy. Uh, Safari will, and without the proxy. So it will leak. Um, the, the results, on the, on the right side are in orange because uh, I do not take uh, DNS legs into account. Uh, so if you are just using, if you are browsing Tor, just using SOX, watch out for DNS because an attacker can uh, sp uh, spy on your connection just watching your DNS queries. Uh, the current stable version of Firefox is, bro is safe by broken implementation because it does not honor the poster Attribute, so you're safe. Um, latest beta with Tor button. Tor button is safe. Uh, what does it uh, this tool tell to us? It's uh, well, stay with Firefox. If you are using Tor, stay with Firefox and stay with Tor button. So, uh, next ideas. 
first the bad ideas. Uh, JavaScript is the glue of the next kind of web. Uh, it's dangerous and we have to protect ourselves when using Tor from JavaScript. HTML5 will bring nice attack vectors. Um, browser geolocation and all the other bells and whistles are transforming the browser into something more powerful than it was before. So we have to pay attention also to that. And I have to say that the latest beta of Firefox is showing some interesting area worth to take a look to launch a new de-anonymization attack. Um, I'm talking here about uh, the new fonts. Um, they have a new font uh, schema in, uh, in the CSS. I have still to take a look to, the, to that, but it, it's promising. And the next good ideas are use Tor. And if you use Tor, if you like using Tor, set up a relay and stick with Firefox. Uh, there's no reason to use another browser when using Tor because the other browsers are more easily exploitable than Firefox with Tor button. If you are using Firefox to browse Tor, stick with Tor button. Avoid any other proxy switching extension. Um, it may be sound lame, but uh, I, uh, I like giving uh, out talks about Outdoor works and how a user should use Tor in Italy. And always at the end of the talks, someone raises his hand and say, um, I'm not using uh, Firefox with Tor button. I'm using it with, uh, I don't know, uh, Foxy Proxy. Uh, I am safe. No, you are not safe because Tor button, it does not just change your proxy setting. It protects you from several other form of attack. Tor button is good, but it's not enough. Uh, you can visit the torproject.org site for approved extension and some more tips to be more secure and well, spread the word. Uh, go out and say, oh, Tor is cool. Use it and use it safe. So, I, as promised, the, the organization, organizer, I, I take the talk running. Are there any questions? Okay, no question, good. And the last bits uh, on the presentation, you'll find this webography with all the kind of link I take, I've taken the material from. And uh, this presentation has been released on Creative Commons. And that they were over there, which is seed77.slackware.it. It's already online, so go take a look. Download it. Thanks.